What if Gen 9 were based on the Mediterranean? Well, to find out, look no further than the Medis region. Hey everybody, Brandon here, and welcome back to another region review where we review different regions around the Fakemon community. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Medis region over on Instagram, which is a Mediterranean-based region with a focus on Greece and Spain. If you don't know what the Mediterranean is, it is the area around the Mediterranean Sea. Medis is a good friend of mine. We've been in the Fakemon community for a similar amount of time. Our region started up around the same time. Um, and so I'm kind of familiar with the region, kind of like I was with the Leewika region with Michael. Um, but I still have a lot to learn about this region. There's a lot I don't know about this region, and so I'm excited to explore that. But before we get started on this Mediterranean region, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future region reviews. But let's get started. We've got Lee Cub, our grass starter, which is the green cub Pokemon. It's supposed to be based on Melanistic Big Cats, aka Panthers. Um, so it is kind of the, a general big cat um, cub. With these little leaf-like elements, I really like the little leaf-like elements because the bodies, there's not so much on the body because it's quadrupedal. Um, but they added some little leaf-like elements to the face, um, on the head, the tail, to really accent it, make it feel like a grass starter without going overboard with the details, which I feel like a lot of grass starters do. Next up is our fire starter, Novare, which is a mixture of Nova and Bear. It's got a starry eyes, it's a star you know, Pokemon. I just love the little star tail with the stars on its back and in its eyes. I love the way that the, you know, there's the good balance of the design elements so it doesn't feel like too much and you get the point of what they're trying to go for with the starter. You know, fire, bear, cub. They're actually kind of both cubs. We have the green cub and then the bear cub. You know, interesting. But anyway, um, but our fire starter, bear, it's not exactly on the Chinese Zodiac, but, you know, that's okay. You know, not all of them can be, uh, you know, because we're going to eventually run out of ideas for all the different Zodiacs. There's only four left, so sometimes you got to think outside the box, and I really like the starters here. I know what the, the final evolutions look like, and I think what he did with this is actually really incredible. And lastly, we've got our water starter, Spodgy, which is a sponge Pokemon. It's, like, based on sea sponges, which is kind of crazy because sea sponges are these very not, like, animalistic things. They're very, you know, they look like coral almost. Um, and they don't really have any kind of expression or anthropomorphism to them. So, um, uh, Med is adding this anthropomorphiz anthrop anthropomorphization to this sponge is really interesting and a unique concept for... Uh, just a water Pokemon in general, not even just a water starter. Kind of in the same vein as Corsola, adding that, like, little bit of personality to a seemingly inanimate object. Next up, we've got our trainers for this region. They're looking very ready to hit the open sea. They've very got that, like, that, like beachy vibe to the Mediterranean vibe. I like the the stripes of their designs and the, the, hat, the matching hats being kind of like straw hats. I really, really like. Um, so these two, yeah, solid. And I really like the the way his bag is. It almost reminds me of like a milk carton. It's, I don't know. That's just me. It's interesting. I don't know. Next up, we have the titles of what the games of the Medis region are. There's no actual games, so don't get your hopes up. But uh, we have Pokemon Matriarch and Pokemon Patriarch. And I find these titles interesting because they're not really opposites of each other. They're not antithesis. And a lot of Pokemon titles seem to, to seem to do that. Like we have Pokemon Sword versus Shield. Not opposites. O often you're you know using a sword and a shield in combination. Um, you know Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. The Moon isn't really the opposite of the Sun. We think of it as the opposite, but they just kind of come up on like separate times of day. But they're not really quote unquote opposites of each other. Um, so I think it kind of is interesting to see Matriarch versus Patriarch. The feminine versus the masculine, which aren't opposites of each other in any regard, and can be commingled in a lot of ways, which I assume would probably be kind of the idea of if there was necessarily a third title. Um, but I think that's a really interesting take on the, you know, Pokemon titling, because a lot of people like to do those polar opposites. Pokemon Life, Pokemon Death, Pokemon Creation, Pokemon Destruction. And they're really not exactly opposites um, most Pokemon titles are. So I just find this really interesting that they went in this direction with the titles. I know, I spent way too long talking about titles. Let's probably should, you know, get to the Pokemon. So first up, we have our regional bird, which is Metachick. It is the soothing Pokemon. It is a pure flying type, which I always appreciate a good pure flying type. I think, like, the normal flying type is kind of just like, there's no point in putting the normal on it if, you know, it just 
I don't know. I feel like normal should be applied to uh, different things, not just anything that's considered regular, if that makes sense. Even though some birds aren't really considered regular. Birds are weird, man. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we have Metachick. Um, and I really like its very happy-go-lucky grin. It very much looks like it's there to be your friend. It's there to soothe you. Um, Dex Entry says, like, always interested in the well-being of Pokemon and humans. They will often chirp cheerfully to restore their health. Oddly enough, it often works. That's really awesome. I think that's fun. Just having that friend that, like, you know, can always cheer you up. I really appreciate that kind of Pokemon in this region. Next up, we've got our regional bug, which is Pushect. It's a bug ground type. Love a good bug ground type. I feel like bug ground type is a very underutilized type combo. The only one I can, that comes to mind right now is Ninkata. I'm pretty sure Ninkata is a bug ground type. And then it evolves into bug ghost or bug flying. So, like, it completely gets rid of that bug ground typing. Um, but I really, really like this based on a dung beetle called the mud beetle Pokemon, even though we all know what, <laughs> what it is. Uh, but the dex entry says they are always carrying mud, which they use for many purposes, including nutrition and housing. All the effort makes them very strong and durable. And they very, it looks very much strong, but it looks and durable, but it looks like almost like it's struggling, which I think is really an interesting thing there. It's like, yes, it's, you can see it's exerting effort, which is a nice little design detail to show like, hey, Though it is strong and durable, it still struggles, you know? Next up, we've got Weevil, which is bug dark type. So, like, it's a mixture of Weevil and Evil. Great, just great play on words there. He looks very mischievous, very, like, twisting of the mustache, tying you to the train tracks, kind of evil going on there. But with a Weevil, and I really like how the little, you know, nose prong things that, uh, that Weevils have, have like, were able to reach. Into. You can definitely tell it's definitely doing the little, you know, mustache twirling kind of thing going on there which is super cool and i really it's very basic but also gets the point across really well and i, I really appreciate that kind of um basicness that like a lot of people like to over design but this one is simple and gets the point across you know next up we've got squibble uh which is a squirrel plus pebble it is called the collector pokemon and it collects little rocks in its fur apparently so they uh it says on the dex entry they love to picking up stones and pebbles they will wear their favorites and eat and eat the rest. They get so caught up in this that they are, will often neglect looking out for predators. Oh no, Squibble about to get hunted. That's not <laughs> that's not good. Uh, well, definitely definitely keep an eye out there, Squibble. Um, it's, it seems like it's going to become like a normal rock type. Actually, I'm pretty sure it does become a normal rock type. So let's continue onward. Next up, we have Ascladrius. It is the evolution to Metachick. It is uh, Asclepius plus Caladrius. I don't know what those two words mean individually. I'm assuming one of them is like the breed or the kind of bird or something like that. <clears throat> Frog in my throat. Anyway, uh, it's Flying Fairy type. It's the healing Pokemon. It's supposed to be based on doctors, it seems like. Um, it says they can diagnose ailments just by placing their feelers over a sick... It says a sick heart. I think they mean a sick person or a sick Pokemon's heart. Um, they will employ every bit of their power to try and heal them. Which I think is really cool because Metachick is all about making people smile and making people feel better internally, um, uh, like 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 emotionally, and Ascladrius is about making people feel better physically. So it's a really interesting little evolutionary line there. It goes from like kind of more of a therapist role to like a medical doctor role, which I think is a really cool little you know concept there. So yeah, I really like this line. Metachick and Ascladrius is a really good line. Next up we have Beatslay. Which is Bug Ground. It is the Wheeled Bug Pokemon. It's Beetle plus Clay. I just think this is so cool. Like, it's a little, little, like, dung beetle that turned into a car. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I am speed. Um, it does not evolve further. It says it has a new ability called Off-Road that the speed increases when a terrain is active. That's interesting. So it's like about, like, off-roading and, like, tough, like, like, going through the mud and stuff like that. Because it's got these, like wheels that are made of mud so you can just you know carry through that pretty easily that's super interesting and it, and it kind of has like a like almost a military kind of aesthetic to it as well next up we have we vicious and it's gone full tie it to the train tracks kind of evil he's like yes yeah, so i'll get you i'll get you like very very much so evil the traditional depiction of evil i mean dark type is evil type in japan so this dark type very much fits that, you know, that evilness and to the nth degree. Next up, we have Jamatli, which I'm pretty sure is the evolution of Squibble. And now they have full-on crystals and stuff in their tail. Very much serious. Like, it looks like it's... It, it kind of has that, like, the patternation. Like, the patternation? What even is that word? The pattern. The patterning. 
What is the correct word? I don't even know. Well, it has a really cool pattern, and it kind of reminds me of, like, giant flying scrolls and stuff. I don't know if you know those. Like, they have really unique pattern um, to the scroll, and that kind of gives me that same aesthetic. Um, it's a normal rock type, which I kind of predicted would happen. The dex entry says once they evolve, they drop plain stones and start collecting precious stones and crystals. As a result, their, became, their fur became incredibly colorful. They fire beams at anyone that tries to steal their gem. Yeah, this dude's shoot, certainly shooting off some power gems. You can just flick his tail and there's a power gem for you. So, yeah, Jamatli. I don't know what Motley means in terms of squirrels, but I'm very interested. Next up, we have our first regional variant, which is a regional weasel. I'm assuming it would be Medizian. Medizian weasel. It's a pure flying type, got that tails prower, miles prower, tails thing going on there with the spinning tails, which I really think is cool. And I love the coloration on it. It going like the black, blue, and white with the little accent of yellow in there. It's very, very interesting. And like the the uh the like markings look like less like um what's the word? Whiskers. And they look more like almost like vents, like in like, like an aircraft, like aircraft vents or like uh, what's the word, turbine. In a way, I don't know, it's a little bit of a stretch there, but I like how they turned the little thing around its neck, and it's, it's more of an, like, an inflation device to keep them afloat, like like a filled up helium bloom, uh, which I just think is so cool. And this whole, like, the, the transition from water to flying type feels so natural in such an interesting way. And maybe it's because I, you know, I like tails, you know, but this just kind of gives me that kind of same vibe. Next we have a Monkid, which is a normal type monkey. Um, it is the carefree Pokemon. The Dex entry says it's curious and carefree. They try to befriend every Pokemon in the forest. It has a special interest in the bug types that live in the trees. It's a really interesting little tidbit there because it's kind of a reference to monkeys and how they like pick bugs and different little bits out of each other's fur and eat them um, to cl clean each other. I think that's such a unique little concept there. It's got these like little stripes on the side. Um, like I, I know what this turns into, so I'm not going to spoil it for you. But he's got these little stripes on the side that are, like, very, like, it leads into the next part very well. Um, it's, I like its little mask because it adds a little bit of dimension. You know, if you took away that mask, it kind of just looked like a normal monkey. But, like, that little mask gives, it almost gives me Joltik vibes in a way. Like, it kind of reminds me of Joltik's face. If that's, I don't know if that's weird. But, anyway, on to the next. Next up, we've got Turnipod, which is grass ground type. It is Turnip plus Cephalopod. And it's giving me, like, Deku Sprout, freaking Octo Rock vibes. And I love it so much. Just a little flipped upside down tournament turnip that's also, like, like an, a little octopus squid thing. It's freaking adorable. It's really adorable. And I, I just, I honestly, super, I don't know how to explain it. It just is overwhelmingly cute. So next up, we have Temper Troll, which has two forms. It's, first, it has the fiery form, and then it has... The icy form. Um, so we'll we'll stick with the fiery form for now. But uh, in the dex entries, it says the fiery form. Temper trolls are very hot headed, no duh, and don't plan their pranks at all. They get don't get along with the icy form temper trolls uh, as they find them to be too haughty. Um, and then the icy form don't get along with the fire form because they find them to be too reckless. So let's look at the uh, the icy form here. So I like this kind of duality going on here. This you can definitely see the different like. This is very, the, the ice is very structured, very sharp angles, no like flow to it. Whereas this one has very like, it's very a little bit more spiky and flowy like fire um, in its design. And the, it's very interesting. And like, it's, it's also red, which is like bright and passionate and colorful. Whereas white is very solemn and peaceful. And, you know, you know, I, I think that's a really in, an interesting um, little juxtaposition there. So I can't wait to see, I'm pretty sure this thing evolves, right? I, I might not, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this thing evolves. Next up, we have Medizian Floatzel, pure pure flying type. And y'all know how I feel about Floatzel. If you watch my top five best and worst Pokemon of Sinnoh video, it's one of my worst. Um, I don't like Floatzel's design at all. I'm not a fan of Floatzel at all. But Ma uh, Medizian Floatzel just is literal perfection. Like, it took the awkwardness of Floatzel, that I, the things that I don't like about Floatzel, and transferred it into working into a, a different typing, and it works so well. Like, the fluffy, poofy little, like, life raft thing it has turns into this more blimpy kind of aspect. Like, it, it transfers so well over, and, like, its little fins are, like, you know, guiding wings. And it's a, it's just a little, this blimp Pokemon that's so perfect. It's just it's literally so perfect. It's, it's the, it takes that awkwardness of Floatzel, like I said, and just 
works it into this amazing flying type concept. I'm just like, I, I was, I truly do not like Floatzel. It's one of my least favorite Pokemon. Um, and so to see Floatzel in this aspect really like kind of renews my love of uh, of like floats like i just want this to be the real floats i don't want the other floats we have this is the real floats um so the dex entry says floats body is filled with gas but makes it very hard for them to land they love being up in the air though and are very helpful in carrying large packages between cities so they're kind of a parcel delivery service which i think is really cool their abilities are cloud nine and aerial eight which i think are just such clever abilities like cloud nine obviously reference to it being up in the clouds Super cool. I I, I I needed to harp on this a little bit because you guys know how I feel about Floatzel. So. Next up, we have Arachnape. Yup, this is what Monkid evolves into, and this is kind of what I was leading into. It's a literal spider monkey. It's a monkey spider. It's just, it literally has... <laughs> It has multiple arms, like, it's got, a, it's got a stinger even, and it's a normal bug type, which is such a unique take on a normal bug type. Uh, this is actually one of the first Pokemon that uh, Med is shared with me when we first started talking, and I have such a love for it and such a reference for it, because it's just so different than anything I've ever seen. And it doesn't, it, to me, it might feel weird to some, but it, to me, it just really doesn't feel, like awkward like it feels really natural of an idea of a literal spider monkey like a, a, a monkey like spider like spider-man like more man spider from the marvel comics mixed with a monkey like it just i don't know it just fits so well and it's got this new ability called buzz off which gives which uh, for one love the pun uh for two it gives priority to bug moves when the hp uh, pokemon's hp is full so if you're like sitting there at full hp and you want to just get a quick shot in with a nice bug type move uh, bug buzz or something. I don't know. I don't, what is it? It's a it's a it's a tide worth special. It's a mixed attacker So this thing could do some really good damage. I think I, I, I don't know I don't mean to harp on this too much, but this is one of them, uh, the mods that has a special place in my heart next up We have tuber tickle so it's uh, it's tentacle plus tuber which is you know potatoes those kind of root vegetables It's a grass ground type continuing and it's just a full-on octopus now it went from like the like cutesy uh, Deku rock to rock thing to like full-on like actual um octopus vibes and the roots um the, or the tentacles being roots such a good little design aesthetic can i say like like you can and like the turnip head it, it all just fits really together really well i have such like i don't know but Metas does a really good job with their mons and like their ideas and honestly there's some mons that I've like looked at in the past and I've uh, and I didn't realize how in-depth they were until I've been taking a look at them that's why it's fun to have it be a region review because sometimes it's a region review where I'm reacting to stuff but this one's fun because it's a region I'm like actually reviewing and getting to learn more about through a little bit more of a closer inspection. Next up we have Farin Hell, which is a fire ice type it is a combination of both temper trolls it's you know Todoroki incarnate um, and it very much gives me that like feeling of like someone took as like the aspects of ice form or, or icy form and fiery form like grafted them onto this third mon kind of like Omni slash Omega mon um, where it's like the gray mon and the where uh, the, the guru mon uh, kind of come together as the fists of it it kind of gives me that same thing like there was this third black mon that like absorbed into it Kind of a weird thought process, but that's the vibe it gives me. It also gives me the vibe of um, freaking uh, the devil from Cuphead. Kind of gives me that same energy to it. But uh, anyway, the dex entry says, Farron Hell has honed both hot and cold techniques. You know, Todoroki who. And now command hordes, uh, command hordes of temper trolls to do its bidding. When they are bored, they pitch fiery and icy forms against each other. Oh my gosh, this dude's is a right troublemaker. Like, seriously got that devilish energy to it and i love that and I, f I feel like it definitely could learn some like dark type moves in there too um it has a new ability called ignite um which is essentially refrigerate but for fire type so normal type moves become fire type which is a really cool move and the, and the you know those boot moves get boosted a little i think that's super cool and it's like got an ignite plus refrigerate are its abilities and it also has anger point or analytic so there's like four possible abilities kind of crazy i don't know if the pokemon would do that but i still think it's a really interesting concept in general next up we have flare and this thing's just darling it's just so cute like i love the star fire aesthetic we have it with no bear we also have it with flare but the pattern just works so well on a giraffe pokemon and also like the little horns turning into fire stars 
it's just perfect. This looks so cute, and also its tail. I just realized is like a oh, like a like a bomb, like a wick. Would you call that like a wick? Like the rope to the bomb. Is that called a wick? I don't. I don't freaking know. Next up, we've got Raptike. It is the Gust Pokemon. It's a flying type. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be based on Harpies, um, which is kind of cool. Like to see a bird Pokemon take on more of a humanistic, anthropomorphic form. Um, like, I guess that we have that with uh, Blaziken, but like, I don't think like uh, like a like a regional bird has really done that. Unless I'm fail. It's unless my memory's failing me. I'm pretty sure like Torchic. Um, Combuskin and Blaziken are the only ones that have that true anthropomorphic nature. Um, and they're a starter Pokemon, so it's kind of like a given um, at this point for a certain Pokemon to be anthropomorphic. But and anyway, cool little Harpy Pokemon. Next up, we have Hatashiku, which is the regional Pika clone. It is electric grass type, which is just... I, I love... I love it when people use those... Like, in my head, the Rotom forms don't count as a representation of that type combination like that's just another form of rotom like i want true dedicated electric fire types electric grass types electric ice types i want i want all of those to be actually represented by other pokemon other than just a form for a pokemon and so this is really cool and so it uh it is a mixture of hata nezumi which is a vol in japanese and then shiku shiku which means sneezing uh it's an onomatopoeia for sneezing in japanese which, you know, it keeps that trend of uh, Pika clones' names being Japanese, and it does it so well, like a little sneezy vol. And so, uh, let's read its dex entry. It says they generate pollen, which makes them sneeze, and they spread it even more. The pollen cannot provoke, uh, cannot cannot only provoke allergies, but also little jolts of electricity as well. So these little pollen spores have little bits of energy. I don't know how to describe it, but little, you know, little bolts, little how do I don't even describe it? Little jolts of energy in them. Which is super fun, because, like, you just kind of, like, it does make your nose, like, tingle. It kind of like, you know, electricity, like, that tingly sensation. So it's a very good combination, a good mixture. And I like how its tail is, like, a, a plant that releases those spores. So, super clever design. Next up, we have Rafagoff, which I think is such a fun name. It's not a giraffe rig kind of thing to it. Um, but Rafaga in Spanish means burst. Um, so it's, like, burst giraffe. And... It's just, this thing's wacky in the best way. It's fire fairy type. It's got, like, fireworks. It's just, like, it's, like, a big firework. Like, its neck is, like, one of those long, like, fireworks that you, like, shoot off. And, like, its tail is the wick to that firework. Like, its head is about to, like, burst off. Kind of like Mulan, how he, like, they pointed the firework and then the avalanche happened. Kind of same thing. And its, like, horns are just floating fireworks. <laughs> this thing's so wacky, but I love it. I, I, I truly do. I love this mon. Next up, we got Harspoil. There you go, Harpy. This one is even more anthropomorphic, which I think is almost uncanny valley. It's um, it's really interesting. I will admit it's not my favorite. Um, I like I really, but I do like that they included a Harpy Pokemon. I feel like Harpies would be really make really cool Pokemon. And this being a flying poison type also is really cool because the only flying poison type we have is the Zubat line. Make more poison flying types. It's such a cool type combination. Get rid of that ground type weakness, please. So this is cool. And I also just noticed something that I actually find I really this actually is very endearing to me. Its nose and its little quill on the back form like a little pen. That's so cool. I really like that. Next, we've got Puchato, uh, which is it's got a daydream form in another form, uh, a nightmare form, I assume. Um, and so you can see it's got a little shadow underneath there. It kind of looks like a cat. Um, but I, it, I'm interested in this whole, like, it holding this bone in its tail. It almost looks like the tail should be ice cream, but has a bone in it. So I'm very interested. Let's, let's see the uh, nightmare form. Oh, that. Yep. So it's a full-on cat. It's got the fish bone in its mouth. So rather than, like, the leg, like, it, they chew like... In cartoons, they always have the cats liking the fish bones, and then, like, the dogs liking, like, the, the beef meat, like, big bones. So that's really interesting and a really fun play on that. And his shadow being a... It's like cat dog, you know? Like, his shadow is a cat, and his, like, true form is a dog. So we got normal ghost type, um, which is a really cool way of doing a normal ghost type, might I add. Like, having two separate forms. Kind of like the electric dark typing with more Morpeko. Though Morpeko wasn't really my favorite. But anyway, we'll save that for another day. Next up, we have Munchum, which is an ice dark type, and it's a vampire. Like, this, this mon, 
makes me laugh so hard because it's so cute but based on such a horrific thing as vampires like sucking your blood like how did that like they managed to ma perfectly capture the pokemon feeling of like oh he's friendly he's getting little tiny fangs but he's friendly and but he's a nice dark type and he's called the bite pokemon um the dex entry says its teeth are mo the most sensitive part of its body and uses them to examine everything it always looks at its reflection to make sure if its hair looks sleek <laughs> i love the little reference there because Freaking vampires can't see themselves in mirrors on top of that. And it's an ice type because, you know, they they run ice cold. They're the undead, right? As well as uh, the saying its teeth are the most sensitive part of its body is essentially a reference to sharks. Because sharks, it's like a, putting that whole sharks are misunderstood because sharks bite people out of curiosity to, like, get a feel for them. It's essentially like like touching you like, hey, what, what are you? And so it's essentially putting that same thing onto a vampire, like a baby vampire. It's just so clever. I love it. Next up, we have Low Brawl. It's a fighting type wolf Pokemon. And it's Lobo in, you know, Spanish for wolf plus brawl. I like the inclusion uh, the inclusion of um, the Spanish, like, you know, because this is partially Spain inspired. So that, that addition of Spanish. I forgot, to, uh, I forgot also to mention that Metis is also from Spain. So that's partially why um, this region is based on Spain as well. Um, but I like the little X. You can you know, get that little, oh, I've been in, I've been through it. But it gives me kind of almost a fighting dark type vibe. Like, just coloration and, like, the little scar, you know, like, kind of gives me that same thing. Um, but its text entry says it will challenge any Pokemon that crosses its territory. Deep down, it has a noble heart. And it carries, a, a, it's carried away by instinct. It becomes oddly calm, staring at the moon. Like most dogs howling at the moon, you know? Next up, we have Quilebrut, which is based on the Quilebre, and, you know, the name is, as well as the design. And it's Brute. Uh, it's a pure dragon type. Um, from what I understand, actually, the, um, the first gym leader uses this, um, as their only Pokemon. They use only a Quileberut, so it's supposed to be, like, a big challenge for you, because, um, as you can see on its wings, it's got fire, water, and grass, because it's kind of, almost to, like, mock you in a way, like, hey, you know, all these three things you have at your disposal, but none of them will work against me. Which I find is really interesting. Um, the Dex entry says, It is a real plague in Metis, terrorizing entire villages at a time. Defeating one will earn the beginners the respect of their peers, and they will be considered seasoned trainers. Um, the story of the Quelebre is actually really interesting, um, but you should definitely look it up. It's, it's, I'm not going to go into full detail here, but it's a really cool story. Um, they have a really big um, thing about it in Spain, like this whole celebration. Um, surrounded by this specific kind of dragon, but anyway, continuing on. Next up, we've got Vladinx, which is Vlad plus Jinx, um, which is interesting because it's like supposed to be like, it, it, it kind of is almost like the opposite of Jinx, the Pokemon, but it's supposed to be like Jinx as in like putting a Jinx on you, but Jinx is usually spelled with an I, so it's kind of like a, 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 a lack of a better term, bastardization of the word in general. But Vampire, Ice Dark type, still managed to make it friendly, still managed to make it feel like a friend Pokemon. Still creepy, but like still at the same time like, oh yeah, I could see myself using that as a Pokemon. Next up, we've got Selenobo. So it's uh, Selene plus Lobo. I'm pretty sure Selene is like an, uh, a moon goddess, if I'm not, not mistaken. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's fighting fairy type, so fairy being based on the moon in this case. So it's very, like, calming. It's almost psychic type in a way. It's very, like, calm. Um, but in the dex entry, it says, Under the influence of the full moon, it's mastered its wild instinct to become more calm and collected. Uh, Selenobo harnesses the power of moonlight to imbue its kicks and punches with magical force. Very, very cool. Very anime in a way. Like, very, like, like, I don't know. Like, almost Red 13 from Final Fantasy, uh, from Final Fantasy 7. Kind of that same kind of aesthetic to it. Next up, we have Tuatero, which is a really clever wordplay. It's Tuatara plus Taro, Tuatara being a kind of lizard. Um, it is the clairvoyant Pokemon. It is psychic dragon type. And I just love this. You've kind of got that mysticism, that crystal ball, you know, uh, psychic kind of, like, not psychic typing, but like psychic as in like, like a medium. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, Tuatero, it says on the dex entry, uh, Tuatero's third eye not only allows it to see into the future, but also allows gifted seers to peer into it and get a glimpses too. When threatened, it unleashes powerful psychic power. So this is kind of like the Tuatero are like the partner Pokemon of the mediums and like kind of, uh, psychics of the Metis region, which I find really cool. I like, I like 
imagining occupations with certain Pokemon. It makes me really imagine the world that they're going for just a little bit better. Next up, we've got Bronzely, which is a mixture of bronze and athlete, and it's a bronze Olympic medal mixed with an Olympian, which is just so good. I love this 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 uh, um, concept because it's it's very like it's very human. Like it's I love I like object Pokemon that but manage to make them feel like anthropomorphic in a way. I've used anthropomorphic a lot, but that's the word of the day, anthropomorphic. That's what it feels like to me. It's very, very much that. And like, I love that. Like some certain object, co object Pokemon are just object Pokemon, but when you can make them feel like almost human-esque, I think is really cool. Next up, we've got Sylvastic, which, uh, which is a mixture of silver plus gymnastics. And it's the silver, it's the silver trophy. Uh, instead of a medal, it's a trophy. And it's just so fun. You can see it's very like supposed to be like very nimble. You kind of see like it's got the like the ribbon twirling kind of thing going on there. Very, very much the mid stage is very much supposed to be like the um, what the first stage was like running. This one is very much the elegance of gymnastics and that kind of stuff, um, which is really cool that they're progressing that not only in in like the fact that it's progressing from a bronze medal to a trophy, but progressing the type of of Olympic. Um, you know, uh, sport that they're doing. And finally, we've got Gold Dictor, which is gold plus Victor. And this dude just got, you know, he's Macho Man, all about the heavy lifting, probably like the 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 physical categories of kind of stuff like that. Um, and it's it's really cool. It's it's giving me like Hercules vibes in that way. Um, it's very much supposed to be that like that like champion, that like big brooding champion. You know, that you imagine. So I think it's really cool. Steel fighting type is also just such a fun combination we haven't seen since Lucario, I'm pretty sure. Am I wrong there? I'm pretty sure it's only Lucario that has that typing. So this take on a steel fighting type is very interesting. Next up, it looks like we have our professor for the region, Dr. Carob or Karob. Um, it's the resident researcher in the Medes region. He is in charge of overseeing the start of the journey of many trainers. He's also best friends and former co-students with, with the reigning champion, so he's really well connected. Uh, he's very hands-on and loves exploring every bit of the region to study how Pokemon relate to their environment. You can see he brought along his Muppy um, that he probably he met in one of the field trips, I believe. Yeah, Muppy is a new Pokemon that we'll see in just a second. Next up, we have the Rotom Compass. Um, this is a recently developed uh, item and exclusive to the Metas region. Metas is a long story of navigation and cartography, obviously kind of a reference to, you know, the Mediterranean. You can see all of that kind of thing, go uh, the kind of stuff going on in the background. So it's very much that um, kind of vibe to it, that, 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 that vibe of exploration and stuff like that. So this is kind of compounding on that. Um, it's still a novelty in the region, so Professor Carib only gives it to new trainers he trusts to use it well. Amazed with how eager for adventures the newcomers Aura and De Dennis are, I didn't even read the Protag's names, sorry. Um, he gave each a Rotom Compass along with their new starter Pokemon. So this is really cool. Like I said, very much into that um, that exploration exploration uh, of the region that I very much like that vibe. Feels very adventurous, you know, that the Odyssey kind of vibes to it. Next up we have Cell Luzu, which is Sail plus Luzu. I'm pretty sure Luzu is a kind of boat. So it's like a boat fish Pokemon, which is so cool. And honestly, it reminds, it almost feels like an evolution to Bruxish with its coloration. Like, I could see Bruxish turning into this very long, elegant looking thing. Not to say that the, you know, necessarily the, you know, concepts mix very well together. But this is some, the kind of the direction I could see if we ever did get a Bruxish evolution. Not that we would, because statistically, you know, it has the stats for no, no evolution. Anyway, sorry, getting into semantics here. This Pokemon is really cool. It's just a boat. It's like a certain kind of boat, but mixed with a fish, which I just find super fun. Next up, we've got Pantheek, which is the evolution to our grass starter, Lee Cub. Um, and uh, yeah, the starters were, were kind of far out. Some people, you've noticed in some of these region reviews, some people immediately put the starters at the beginning of the whole evolutionary line. Some wait a little bit. Uh, Meta's waited a little bit to kind of build up the anticipation um, of, of these starters. But here we have Pantheek. It's got more of a wooden mask now, which I think is really cool. I think wood, I would love to be incorporated into more grass type designs. I feel like we have wood incorporated into like Sudowoodo, who's a rock type, then Trevenant and Phantom. But, like, I'd really love to see it incorporated in, uh, in different kind of ways and more interesting designs. Um, I think they kind of they kind of have it in uh, Rillaboom, too, with his drum set. So there's that, I suppose. Um, but anyway, I like the bands around its arms and, uh, or I should arms, but its uh, legs, front legs and back, back paws. Um, and generally, it just looks like a very, 
interesting. Like I'm, I like, I kind of know what the evolution has uh, looks like. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, and you, as you can see, like it went from two little leaves on its tail to three, which I find also interesting. And its little leaf turned into like a little hairstyle, like a little you know Simba kind of thing going on there, which I which I think is really cool. Next up, we have Ursaster, which is a mixture of Ursus, which is bear in Latin, and Aster, which is star in Latin. I love the Latin mixed in there, uh, but it all manages to come to a, a word that just sounds very English to me. And it almost sounds like, it's like almost like disaster, but like mixed with Ur, like Ursa. That's so anyway, it's supposed to be based on uh, the like Ursa co like constellations. I'm pretty sure there's Ursa, Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. Um, so it's kind of based on that. Um, and I just love how it continues this whole star aesthetic. It's got a, like a little constellation. I'm pretty sure that's Big Dipper on its little... Um, chest there with the little star. It almost looks like a sash. And it's so simple. It's so effective and so cute. Like this middle stage is, this is one of my favorite middle stages um, out of the three. And, and and like one of the middle, favorite middle stages I've seen so far because it's just so simple and so effective. I said this already, but it is very simple and effective, which I love. Next up, we've got Spongent, um, which is a mixture of sponge and absorbent. This dude has like little shields now, like little almost fists or shields. Um, they use their shield-like sponge, uh, it's the also shield, shield-like sponges to absorb large amounts of water and expel them with extreme pressure. I love that idea. Do you ever, like, sit, like, you ever had, like, a sponge where, like, you let's say you're doing the dishes. Sometimes you just, like, soak up the thing and then pull it up and then you let it go. Like, it's just something satisfying about that. And that's kind of what this vibe gives me. It's, like, that satisfyingness of, like, the, like, but it's, it's using it in a unique way. Like, the squeezing and then, ex like, expelling of of water which is really interesting like absorbing it and expelling it is really cool as a concept for a, a, a pokemon not only not just like a pokemon in general but also a starter pokemon i like i like how it's almost it almost feels like kind of like a clown thing going on with a little thing so i'm interested to see where this goes i'm pretty sure i remember the, where this goes but it's been a minute since i've seen the starters so we'll see next up we have medizian loudred which is normal steel type it's straight up got trumpets and tuba, like like all those you know horn instruments mixed in. Rather than being like um, like speakers, they're actual manifestations of instruments. Um, because of that steel typing, it like adds that like that, that physical physicality of the instruments, which I think is super fun and clever. Um, and uh, the next entry says diet changes made Loudra develop a metal coating. Not sure what it's eating to give it steel body, but I want some. I want I want to have a hard body. Um, sorry. Since they created sounds and melodies unknown to Loudred in other regions, they challenged each other to create better music. I think that's super fun of a clever concept. It's just like kind of like a jam, like a jam sesh. Like the the other Loudred, let's say like Hawinian Loudred and then the Medizian Loudred challenge each other to and like try and build off each other to make more an awesome a more awesome sound together, like a jam like a jam session with musicians is. It's such a fun and clever concept. Next up, we've got Cricketune, uh, Medizian form Cricketune. It is bug ghost type, and I love how they've hammed up like the violin aesthetic to it and made it like thinner and sleeker, like kind of like a violin to a viola situation. It's very thin and sleek and ghostly. Um, so the Dex entry says that Cricketune and Mediz tuned their musical abilities around graveyards, and the spiritual energy around them turned them into ghost types. They sound melancholic even when happy, so that's oh, that's super cool. That's really cool. I I really like I like this. And it, um for the record, this and um the Medizian Loudred have a new move called Orchestra, which powers up the uh, sound based moves. I have a, an ability in um in Cornera called Orchestrate, which is essentially like um uh refrigerate, but for sound type moves turns normal to sound type. You know, obviously that was a solid transition. Anyway. It's not enough talking about myself. I love this design. I think it's very elegant and uh, eloquent. Next up, we've got Gorgoral, which is <laughs> such a fun name to say, Gorgoral. Um, it's a mixture of Gorgonia and Coral. I'm not sure what a Gorgonia is, but I assume it's like Gorgon, like a, like a Gorgon. So it's a poison rock type, um, obviously based on Coral, but I'm just interested where the poison typing comes in. Um, let's see. They are very calm and relaxed, but they also care about their environment when threatened. Just scratching their horns can send a Wailord howling in pain. Broken horns become prized items. Okay, so I guess it's I, there are certain kinds of coral that I guess are toxic. I'm pretty sure I've heard about that, but that's it's, it's ringing a bell. But I think that's really interesting. It's a different take on a coral Pokemon. Rather than just making it a rock water type, you made it a rock poison type. 
which I think it's fun that like things that are aquatic in nature can also be made into different Pokemon that aren't necessarily aquatic in nature. Um, so I just I think that's super interesting, and I, I really I really like this as a coral Pokemon. It's very pleasing to look at, and I like the the way like the the flow of all of the like it almost looks like a fancy headdress in a way. <laughs> Next up we have Medusian X Cloud. This thing just makes me laugh. It's so ridiculous in the best way. Like, it has a giant tuba that comes from its face. Like, this, it's just crazy. I love it. And it's got this, like, whole, like, organ thing going on with its head. It's just awesome. And I, I'm realizing now it's got, like, kind of like, got, like, a band uniform going on there. Like, a marching band uniform. Um, which is... <sighs> this thing is just... It's so over the top. It's so extra, and I love it. Next up, we've got Cricket March, which, yes, Cricketune evolves in this region. Uh, it is a bug ghost type still. And it's expanded to be even, like kind of even bigger. It's more like it kind of gives me like bass, like a, like a, a stand up bass uh, vibe to it. And it just expands on the things that I liked about Cricketune, um, that, that 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 like elegance and eloquence. And it's got like this cape. It's like flowy, see through cape, which is so cool. And I like how it's got the little tuning knobs on its nose. They almost look like piercings in a way. Um, I'd like to see the dex entry. It is said that Cricket March could, will compose a beautiful, heartbreaking piece when their beloved trainer passes away. Oh, when the when a, the form of uh, when they form a choir with Cricketune, they can make the spirits cry. Wow, that's that's like chilling in like a really beautiful way. I really like that. That 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 made me feel something. And I love when Pokemon. Like, fake mud especially make me do that. They make me feel something. Also, I just realized that its little hands, like, are the bowstring, like, the strings. To... Yeah, that's it's great. Great. Excellent. Next up, we've got Cone Slime, Poison Steel type. That's another new type combination. Um, it's Cone Snail plus Slime. Pretty simple. I, li I, I, so I often like sometimes that Pokemon just throw two words together. You know, like, Talon Flame. Cone slime. It's a slime with cone. You know, like, I, sometimes it's, it's just simple and effective, you know? I, I That's simple and effective and anthropomorphic. Those are the, the words of this video today. Anyway, Dex Entry. It's passionate about defending the reefs they live in. They're quick to anger and lash out uh, about their... Lash out their poisonous harpoons. Oh, yeah, the hands are like harpoons. I wonder if one hand's like a harpoon and the other's normal, or if they're both like that, and, or like they can transform. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I... If treated correctly, their venom can be used as a prized dye. That's cool. Um, it does not uh, evolve further. I like these single stage mons. Cone Slime, uh, Gorgoral, also really good. I think they're supposed to be... No, they're actually... No, they're not exclusive. I thought they were supposed to be exclusives. But they both... They make sense. They kind of counteract each other. Like, Cone Slime defends the Gorgoral in a way, you know? Next up, we've got Muppy, which we saw earlier. It is Mud plus Puppy. Ground type. Um, yeah, Muppy loves to play in the mud. Which apparently not only makes them happy, but also raises its vitality and strength. Just a clever little concept. You know, just a clever little, oh yeah, uh, you know, dogs like to play in the mud. Make them, you know, a mud puppy, muppy. And I just like how its pattern on its little toes, the little mud patterns along its body and on its, like, eyes. It's just super cute, adorable. And it looks like a little sad. And when it's just a little sad boy, it just makes the, just, it's, you know, a little bit more cute. Next up, we've got Soylinx, uh, which is also ground type. We've got a ground type cat and a ground type dog we also have a dog with a cat shadow so the dog and cat parallels are really strong in this region um anyway i like the name soy Lynx. works out really well um dex entry says having hunted having been hunting down oh geez having been hunted down for their rich pelt and their habitats reduced they are now very shy and will try to blend in with the ground perfect lynx is this is a, probably uh, a reference to the iberian lynx of spain um, one of the most iconic animals from that region. And I like... it's It's got like a rocky texture to it. I almost would think it's a rock type over a ground type. Um, to me, personally, I think I would have made um, it a rock type. Um, and like... Because it just... That, 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 that vibe. It gives me that vibe. Honestly, fun fact. I did make a rock type Lynx in Cornera. So there's me speaking from my bias there. But it's still a really solid mod. Personally, I probably would have made it a rock type. That's just my opinion though. You know, whatever. Next up, we've got the Mineral Stone, which uh, is an item that used to evolve certain ground, rock, and steel type Pokemon. Um, the first to evolve with it are Muppy and Soylinx, so I, I'm assuming we'll probably see that shortly. Next up, we've got Canisith, 
um, which is the Fey Dog Pokemon. And yes, it is the evolution to Muppy. It is a ground fairy type. Uh, Canisith is based on Canid plus the Kusith, um, which is a, a famous uh, bit of um, mythology. Um, I'm pretty sure it's from... Oh, gosh. I think it's Scotland? No? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's Scottish or Gaelic or Celtic in, in origin. Um, Canith, uh, Canisith can be seen running free in the wild. The soil it touches becomes rich in nutrients, uh, and the Pokemon around become happier. So I think this is interesting. So to me, it's it's interesting because like the coloration and even the tail lead me to feel like, oh, grass ground type. But I like how it went for the grass fairy type instead because it changes up what a fairy type can be because a fairy type doesn't always necessarily need, like it, en it enriches the soil. It doesn't necessarily make plants glow, but it enriches the soil with nutrients. That's very like fairy, lights, life, bringing that to life. And, that, and it's also based on like a legend, a mythology. So that fairy type makes sense, even though you kind of feel like it's a grass type, it, it, it you know subverts expectations in that way. Next up is Wrestlinx and it's a ground fighting type. So we have a ground fairy and a ground fighting. This makes a little bit more sense to me. Actually, you know what? After seeing this, I kind of take back what I said earlier. I like the ground fairy, ground fighting counterpart kind of thing going on there. Um, and if, especially because fairy type is strong against fighting type and cats, you know, cats and dogs. Dogs are always, you know, the ones chasing the cats. Kind of that thing. Um, wrestling plus Lynx. Wrestling's golden. Golden name, uh, name there. It is called the survival Pokemon. They fight tooth and nail for survival of their species. Their camouflage fur... And Deadly Claws are their biggest assets. Um, and yeah, these are both evolved via the Mineral Stone, which I think is super cool. Its face is really intimidating. You know, just taking a look at the design real quick. Its face is really intimidating. It's got this, cam like, I like the camouflage aesthetic it has to it. Like, it, it expands upon that, um, the thing that was already there with Soylinx. Um, but makes it even more, like, traditional camouflage, you know? Next up, we have the Navi Ball, which I think this design is so cool. Like a compass on the front of a Pokeball. Very cool design aesthetic. But uh, it says it, the Navi, the, or Navi, not Navi. Oh, God. Hey, listen. The Navi Ball was developed in the Metas region to cater to the abundance and love for water and flying type Pokemon who always help the seafaring people of Metas sailing the blue seas. It's so cool. It, it says it has a 3.5 uh, times chance of catching water um, and flying Pokemon. I assume that means like a three times... The 3.5 times chance on top of the Pokeball is what I'm assuming it means. Um, and I just think it's so cool. Like, the level of adventuring, like, the sailing the open seas, very, like, explorative nature of this region really gets me. And especially, like, you can really feel it in the, like, the background, too. Like, the maps and the compasses and ships and, like, that, that classic kind of map aesthetic to it really like this whole region very much feels like it's a, like, got this sense of whimsy and adventure to it you know next up we got lacquerel it's just a water type you know fish cute little fish it's got, i think it's supposed to be like a mixture of lackey this is lack and mackerel so uh dexentry says many schools populate the seas of the Medes region making them a common sight they try to hard to stand out within the group honestly i feel like the normal type would have fit on this well like a water type because it's just it's a very simple design like it's a very simple fish you know pure water type but i think the fact that it's trying to stand out it is so regular it's so common that the normal type would have fit on that as well that's personal opinion next up we have shellag which is a water ghost type and it actually evolves from lacquerel using a dawn stone um uh but they are it's a mixture of uh shell plus sea hag so this is based on all kinds of sea hag it's got little design parts from a bunch of different Pokemon. You got Cloyster, you got Shelder, you've got, um, uh, what was it called? Cone Slime in there. You've got Sloking, you've got Oshawott and Duwat in there. And I'm, there's pro I think there's one more that I, it's, it's a little bit more broken up than what I'm used to, uh, or than what I'm like capable of kind of figuring out. But it, it is it is another water Pokemon and I can't put my finger on what? Clamperl maybe? Uh, I don't know. But it's got all these kinds of shells and, and uh, different Pokemon in there. Um, the Dex entry says they use occult powers to crack open the shells of Pokemon and absorb their souls. They wear their pieces as prizes. Oh gosh, all of these poor Pokemon! Look at them all, poor things. Oh my gosh, Shell Egg coming, coming in clutch, trying to terrify everyone. My gosh. Next up, we got Finmate, which is a water fighting type. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm this... This gives me 100% Spongebob energy. I literally cannot... Like, literally, I just imagine this dude walking into the Salty Spittoon. Like, that's... The, <laughs> literally, that's just the vibe I get from it. It's a good design, but, but I can't help but feel that way about it, you know? Next up, we've got Cycloder, which is green team. They also have a red team. Um, not much of a difference there aside from coloration, it seems. Um, but it's so cool. It's a steel type. Like, uh, it's supposed to be, like, um, a satyr, but it's also kind of got a centaur thing going on there, where, like, the wheel equals its legs, even though the legs are attached to the wheel. It's so interesting, and its horns are handlebars. Such a clever concept. Next up, we've got Medizian Elgium, and it's ground psychic type now, and it's based on pharaohs, because, you know, Egypt is in that kind of Mediterranean era, uh, era, area. Um, and so the text entry says there is evidence that Elgium had appeared in Medes thousands of years ago, much earlier than any sightings of uh, Elgium in Nunova or other regions. They live next to ancient monuments. This is, of course, a reference to ancient aliens, the theories about aliens coming and helping and building the pyramids, because Elgium and Behem are both based on, you know, that, uh, the, the aliens and stuff like that. So I think it's super interesting that that, that like they, they combine the concepts it really works well i don't know if the pattern's different on its head but i kind of feel like the pattern is different on its head i'm not sure next up we've got eldegoss uh a medesian eldegoss um so it seems like goss of Flora doesn't get an actual like um you know regional form itself but this one is grass steel type and it's called the cotton cactus pokemon um and i think it's really cool to like have that steel type be incorporated as um, little spikes and like little accents on its eyebrows and the little jewel on its thing. We have a uh, water or water grass poison type uh, Cornarin Eldegoss and Gossiflora in our region. And it's fun because I actually shared that we shared our little Eldegosses with each other, which was uh, super fun. Uh, but its dex entry says blown away to an arid area. Eldegoss and Medes adapted to their new life by absorbing minerals in the soil, soil and developing sharp needles. Their cotton is Cotton is finer and harder to collect. Super cool. I really, I really enjoy this concept a lot. It's just, just a solid, solid, you know, regional form. Next up, we've got Cyclotar, and it is a mixture of Cycle and Centaur. Yes, so cool. I love it so much. It's literally a Centaur bicycle. It's a Centaurcycle. I, you, you know, like, it's, 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 I don't know. It's just great. It's all around great. Looks speedy. I like the lightning bolt elements of it without it being electric type because, you know, there are sometimes you want a sick paint job. And that's and that's what this is. It's just a sick paint job. I like to see that we have the red team as well. Um, I think they might be. Uh, yes, you can see that there's the height here as well. I, I haven't been paying attention to some of these, but I, I just think in general, it's a really, really unique concept and adding like the handlebars as as like horns to and a helmet the whole thing just comes together really cool i just noticed that its tail is the bike seat and that's so good this is go goat this is go goat to the extreme you know <laughs> next up we've got behem ground psychic full-on pharaoh mode and i love that they put the little you know crown uh around its big head because it fits it fits on it really well it really does this concept matches on behem and tracks really well i like how they have the little eye thing like most egyptian kind of art depicts i think that's ugh, clever concept just a clever concept in general next up we have seth thunder which is based on seth or seth um from uh, egyptian mythology but mixing in the dark typing you know you got set with the jackal kind of thing going on there and i i just i am so in love with the design this design as especially as a dark electric type mixing in those um, those Egyptian art elements and the, the the Egyptian deity elements to it, having like the little makeup be lightning bolts, having that split tail with the electricity, it almost feels like like a like a whip, like you know, it's like crack it, like that just all around. It's really well designed, and I, I it's just super sleek and a, definitely a mod I would use if I were ever to you know play the game of this. Um, the dex entry says that this sleek Pokemon will swiftly deliver powerful electric jabs to anyone it considers a threat. It will summon thunderstorms even in the middle of a desert. That's cool. That's cool. I like that a lot. Um, it's got a really high attack and uh, speed as well, which is really, really fun. I, 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 just, I just genuinely enjoy this mod. Next up, we've got Solyris. It is a mixture of soul and papyrus. It's literally ghost paper, ghost psychic type. And it's just... We haven't 
like we haven't had like a genuinely like, a map or like paper Pokemon. I'm pretty sure this, this turns eventually into a map. But I love that its eye is supposed to be like kind of like the compass rose. You know, like it's supposed to be like the compass, but it's still an eye. And it's just so uh, it's just so clever to me. Like I, I I know how this thing evolves, and it's just I, I can't look okay, at. Let's just move on. Ready? Next we've got Fanta Scroll. So cool. It's a, literally a scroll. Its eye is developed even further. And it's got this, this like, language on it. I'm not sure what the language says, honestly, in the last one, too. It looks like the last one said, like, 100 or something. I can't exactly read what this says. Um, I would love to know what it has on there. It doesn't actually have a dex entry, either, I just realized. Um, but the, I, I love that its hands are opening up the scroll. Like, it has hand, like, it's, you know, phantasmic arms are holding it up. And it's got this crooked smile of ripped paper. So clever. Uh, it's such a great way of developing, like, oh, go, paper goes to a scroll. And I'm pretty sure this evolves one more time. We have Grimordum, the final evolution of this line. And it goes from a piece of paper to a scroll. To a scroll? What is this, Marvel? Sorry. To a book. A grimoire. Which is such a clever way of keeping uh, keeping that line going. And I love that its face is, like, fully on the book. Like, its face is actually fully formed now. It isn't, like, this... Like, one eye, kind of a mouth, you know, half an eye, kind of a mouth. It's literally fully formed, fully put in there. And it, the and it's, like, got this tongue that's also a bookmark. And then, then, and then, just look at its arms. Its arms are made of letters. So clever. It, sa it says a mini, and I'm not sure what that means. Or a ra mini. I'm not sure what that means, but that's still super cool. Ugh. Ah, gorgeous. Gorgeous idea. Next up, we have some new evolutions. Um, one of these evolutions is actually included in our evolutions of every type, which you'll see it coming up. Uh, but this first one is Baneon. It is a poison type, um, and it's based on Wolfsbane. Uh, it's, it's Bane plus Wolfsbane plus Eon, you know, the Eon trope. Um, and it's a bloom. It's just based on poisonous flowers in general, which is a unique thing uh, to, I think, a poison typing. I think a lot of poison types like to go for the, like, like sludge or like toxic aesthetic. But this is going for a more florally... Uh, gentler poison typing with um and, and it's got these flowers and its ears and tail are like little blooms little little tulips almost and i think that's i just generally think that's super fun and unique you know as for for an evolution next up we've got xenion which is the flying type evolution and this one's super cool to me too because it's very simple and it's got this like collar very much like gives me like you know old and you know fashion as well as kind of like clown in it too it's very light and its ears kind of have that uh, like wing aesthetic its tail its legs even have that for me it's a little too much wings i think i would have uh, like not done like maybe the little hair poof or maybe just made the the ears a little bit more implied as wings and maybe the tail leave that alone so that we could have like it's just a little too much wings for me i, I don't like the flying type um evolutions that all go wing i like trying to shoehorn in wing this one does it well i will say it does do it well it's just not my favorite design aesthetic for flying type evolutions granted it is still a solid evolution in my opinion and finally we have marbleon which favorite rock type evolution like it is so good like it's got a kintsugi thing going on there with like the gold in the cracks uh, kintsugi is like the art of um you know reshaping and re uh, putting together old pottery that is broken and putting um, gold in the cracks to make it look you know um, look at even cooler you know and that's kind of got that same thing here with marbleon and like the 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 you know columns like the column ionic i'm pretty sure it's ionic column design of the the you know little collar as and and it's just it's, it's it looks like a perfect little EV statue carved out of out of marble and I just love that and it's also called the sculpture Pokemon and it looks like a sculpture it looks like you could you, you I can imagine vividly going into like the more Grecian era or like area of the Metis region and you just see these dudes sitting on top of like these little you know stone areas and you think they're a statue you walk up to them and they're like one of those static Pokemon you don't realize it's a static Pokemon kind of the vibe I get from this next up we have Gecko, which is Get, like gecko plus egg this is a little gecko and an egg rock type it's a very simple design very like just kind of cute it's just a cute little egg pokemon next up we have julie which is a mixture of jewel plus joey it's literally a kangaroo with a battery backpack 
And what I think is especially cool about this design, a little unique little thing on there, its ears have the little connecting parts that connects to the bottom part of the batteries. You know those little things you can, some things have like the little clamp you put on them to keep the battery in place. It's exactly that. And it's just a little clever design element like that that just makes this mod infinitely better. I do think the idea of a Gengaro with straight up a battery in its back is a little simple, but also really cool. I don't know. It's it's so interesting. It's such a weird uh, dynamic there. Next up, we have Medizian Whooper. It is an ice poison type. And when I tell you, these concepts mix together so well. The little things off the side of its head, the head becoming little fractals. That it, 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 it's just, <laughs> I literally love Whooper even more by seeing this. Like, it's so simple. And it, it looks like a little snowman. It looks like a little snowman version of Whooper. That's what it looks like to me. And I love that about it. I mean, the ice poison type, a unique type combination. I do think that this could have been pure ice type and would have been fine. Or ice water type and would have been fine, in my opinion. But I, you know, I know this thing involves, I, I say that way too much. I know this thing involves, but, it, but I do. And I, 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 I understand it based on that. So next up we have a lith armor, which is lithos plus armor. Um, and it's it turned its egg into like this rock solid armor, which is really an interesting like concept there, like of holding on. It's like, it's like holding on to a piece of your childhood and using it as a way to strengthen you, which is a cool really unique concept for a Pokemon. It's rock fighting type, um, which I, I, and it looks like it uses its tail like a sword. They've kind of just started un unincluding the uh, dex entries here. So I'm curious, I can't, I can't get all the details on these ones. I tried to read the dex entries um, uh, to these ones because I think that there's some, um, Metas writes some really interesting and lore um, providing dex entries that I think are interesting. Next up, we've got Kangaroom. I love the idea of Ohm. Like, the, like, using Ohm and then mixing Kangaroo in there. Electric Fighting type, another unique type combination. Um, and it's, it's instead of a Joey in its pouch, it's got a, it's got a battery, which is just great. It's just funny, and it's, it's just so funny and unique. And it kind of reminds me of, uh, Kangaroomon. I'm pretty sure that's what's called, Kangaroomon from Digimon. I think that's a thing. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Sorry if it's not a thing. Digimon fans out there, if there are any of you. Next up, we've got Nutoxire. It's a mixture of Newt plus Toxic plus Quagsire, and it is chilling, pun intended. Like the the rib spikes. Ah, sorry, that like that gets me. Like get like it's one of those things that makes me cringe. Like rib spikes. Ugh. Like it's the like the I said this in a past video. It's like the 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 bone jutsu guy from Naruto. That stuff kind of just makes me go like. Ugh, ugh. But it's a really cool design, and I like how it differs from Quagsire. It looks very non-plus, very like, mm, what do you want kind of vibe to it. And it's it's and I like how they kept like Quagsire gets rid of those these little like I almost want to call them horns on the side of the head. Um, but I like how Nutoxire keeps them. Next up, we've got Isolisk. Such oh god, such a clever name, such a freaking clever name. Icy plus Basilisk, Isolisk just works. It just works. Um, it's a Dragon Ice type, similar to our uh, our uh, regional, you know, our Corneran, uh pseudo legendary um, Ice uh, Dragon Ice. I don't, is, did I make it Ice Dragon or Dragon Ice? Whatever. Anyway, this is Isolisk, just a cute little Basilisk. It almost has like cockatrice cockatrice vibes to it. And I really like. Honestly, the coloration is really pleasing to the eye. The coloration is very very pleasing to the eye, which. I really like, and I like that it's ice, it's got like an icy beak and icy claws. So like the aesthetics of the things it would use to attack, and it's, and it's got claws too, and it's like little wings, it's got little icy claws here. All Everything it would use to attack are all icy, which is really cool. Next up we got Sareo, um, which is a mixture of Brontosaurus and Rayo, which means lightning in Spanish. And also you kind of get the ray in there, like ray gun. Um, this one is a dragon electric type. We got we have dragon ice and we have dragon electric. I think this is interesting. Uh, like very different from uh, other, you know, Brontosaurus kind of mons, like Aurorus, kind of that 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 mon. I'm not sure if that's a Brontosaurus. I'm pretty sure it's a different kind of Saurus. There's a word for that. Is it theropod? I'm probably wrong. Don't come for me, paleontology community, please. Um, but it, it it very much differs. I like how it's like an electric tower. You know those electric towers you see. Um, I'm not sure if they're around the world, but they, we have these electric towers in the U.S. that are like really, and they have the cords attached to them, and that's what this reminds me of. And I think that's super clever, super fun little, you know, electric type Brontosaurus. 
Next up, we've got Blizzalisk, which is Blizzard plus Basilisk. Also a genius name. Um, just Dragon Ice type, Cockatrice ass, Basilisk, crazy mon. Like it's look, it almost looks like its beak is a drill now. Um, and I, I still love it. It just keeps that like icy aesthetic to it, where like all the things that would be used to attack are icy. Its tail even now has like this spear on it that's icy. So I really like that little bit of you know like. The, the idea that, like, everything it uses to attack is reinforced with ice. Reinforcing that ice typing. Next up, we have Sorumble, which I think is such a good name. Um, a Dragon Electric type, and it is... It's exactly... It's, it's, it's like those towers. It's like the towers with the wires coming off of them. And it's very badass. I really like the, like... It just feels so grand. So it's just grander, kind of like the Colossi in uh, in Shadow of the Colossus. That's what that's what it feels like, though that like level of grandeur to it. Next up, we've got Formidant, um, and it is formidable plus ant, and it is uh, Formiga is ants in uh, Catlin, so it's also a mixture of Formiga in there, um, and it's a bug dragon type. Dragon type. We have a uh, a electric rat dragon type, and we have uh, a bug dragon type, which is super cool. I will say, I don't necessarily get the dragon type. It kind of looks like it's in like the general shape, you know, of like a Western dragon where they're like on all fours and they have the wings and they're, it has a general shape, but I don't get draconic elements or even arcane, like the, like, like the, the magical elements from it at the current moment. Um, I think this might only evolve. Yeah. It's only evolves from female, um, for female valiance, it seems. Um, kind of like a Slazzle thing going on there. But yeah, I guess I, I just don't really see the dragon typing in this. It's not, not to be overly critical. I'm not trying to be critical of these. I'm just trying to give my honest thoughts, my honest feedback. Um, but yeah, it's just, I'm just not like, like I, maybe the kingly element to dragons. So maybe something like that. I don't quite know. Next up, we have the final evolutions of our starter Pokemon. We have Xylophon, which is Xylos, which means wood in Greek, plus Griffin. Yes, this is a... Full on, like, panther. Everybody gets mad at me when I say panther. What do you mean by panther? It could be a leopard. It could be the... I mean a panther. You know what I mean. It's a big cat that's black. Just, it's a big black cat. Don't come at me. Um, it's, this This is full on. It's got this wooden armor. and such a cool aesthetic. Like, the, I like the way they handled Griffin. They didn't just give it straight up wings out of its back. But its wings are more so, like, an incorporation of its armor. And, like, this extra flair to it. I like it's got, like, a little hook tail. It got rid of the leaves on its tail, and now it's like just full-on wooden armor hook tail. It's a really cool aesthetic, and it, it's interesting because it has like this like mane too, like this grass mane. So it almost like it's like a, a melanistic uh, uh, lion in a, in a way. Next up, we have Rady Astral, and this is a fire steel type. This is my starter Pokemon, 100%. If you don't have to ask me, this is, this is my starter Pokemon. Look at this thing; it's crazy. It, it like. The full-on Big Dipper armor has become, like, linked to these big metal starry claws. And it almost looks like it has, like, a serpent, like a serpent constellation biting its head. Like, it's just so cool in every definition of the word. It's just, except for, you know, it being a fire type, I suppose. But fire steel type as a, generally as a typing for a starter is really cool. I like the grass dark type um, of Xylophon, but this one, Radiastral, is just next level for me definitely my starter pokemon and finally we have sponge bolt which oh it's <laughs> this thing is crazy like this whole line is so crazy they, they like anthropomorphize sea sponges <laughs> which is such a crazy thing to do it kind of looks like one of those like like mad max post-apocalyptic armored people that like they just scrounged together what they could and made some sick armor out of it and then, like, like this just went with that. That's what this gives me in the best way. And, like, the, like I really enjoy the aesthetic of this mod. That being said, yeah, Radiastral is definitely my pick. Next up, we've got Willowfish, which is a water fire type. I just, I just, I think it's just unique. Could have called it, you could have actually could have called it Willow, Willow Whisk, like Willow Whisker, actually. Whatever. It said Willow, Willowfish also works, though. So. Next up, we have Crest Slither. And it's a fire grass type. So we had a water fire type. Now we have a fire grass type. It's a, you know, fire grass type snake Pokemon. And I think it's just super interesting. I, honestly, to me, 
the little horns it has, like, don't, I don't know, it just doesn't match the rest of the design to me. That's just personal opinion. But it, overall, it, like, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good mon. It's not my favorite. And next up, we have Shereed, the grass water type, you know, got to complete that trio. And this one I find to be really clever, actually. I really like that they used the cattails, you know, you know, as, as, um, you know, the glizzies as they were. But it looks like a little river next to the shore. Like, when you look at it, it's like this little river flowing down its its side into a shore. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a duck. It's some kind of aquatic bird. Um, but it's it's just, I like I like that little, like, it, it's almost calming in a way. Weird, I know, kind of a weird thought, but it's, it just does feel like a little calming river with some cattails flowing in the breeze, you know? Toombolt, which is tomb plus ghoul. Um, I don't know where the T comes from. Toombool. So maybe Toombolt? Toombolt? I don't know. I think this thing's cool. I think this thing's sick. I like the idea of a shadow inhabiting this, like, this monument, you know, and just moving it around, you know? Very, it gives me very much, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood vibes, you know, the door that they go in and out of and stuff like that. Rock Ghost type, also another unique type combination. It done really well, and, like, gives that one-winged angel Sephiroth kind of thing going on there as well. Next up, we've got Bunsky, an ice type, pure ice type bunny, the skier. It's really cool. It's giving me Sonic vibes. 100%. Very much Sonic vibes. That same level of aesthetic. Like the spiky, gotta go fast nature of it. And I just think that's cool. And I think a speedy ice type is really fun. I always I always enjoy like a speedy ice type. A lot of uh, speedy mons tend to be electric types. But seeing a speedy ice type is really, really fun. Because ice is usually associated with slow, you know. Slow, cold, freezing. You get, you know, you kind of move more slowly as you get cold. But this one is just like the opposite of that. And I like it how it, I just realized it's got these little ice pick things as the thing. I don't know what these are called. I'm not going to do that motion again. Don't ask. Next up, we've got Avutara, which is Avatarda plus Terra. I'm assuming the Avatarda is a kind of bird. Um, it looks like a turkey to me. It's some kind of pheasant. And it's interesting, it's neck. It, like, it looks like it's a mustache, but it's on its neck. So that's weird. Um, ground flying type. It's just one of those, it's like one of those simple mods, you know? I think it's it, not to say let, it's an insult at all, but it kind of reminds me of those like kind of simple forgettable mons, kind of like Stunfisk before Stunfisk got a regional variant, but like Stunfisk or Drampa or that kind of that kind of mon that you're just like, oh yeah, that's just you know what it is, and then you forget about it. This is not an insult at all. I still think it's a cool mon in general, but I actually just realized that it's like wings are supposed to be like layers of mud, which is really cool. Um, but generally, that's kind of the vibe I get from it. I don't know. That water type Growlithe that we wanted to um, match the ice type of Vulpix and Ninetales. Um, so, yes, it's, it's just a pure water type Growlithe. Just throwing those little watery design aesthetics onto a Growlithe. This is obviously before um, Legends Arceus, you know, with our Fire Rock type. This was this was made way before that, made way before Legends Arceus was even announced. Um, but, yeah, just Growlithe, but wet. That's what this is. And next up, we have Arcanine, which is now a water dragon type, which I think is cool. It, it adds those, like, fin-like, you know, Kingdra-esque elements to it. Gives it those, like, more long, fang, like, very draconic fangs. And it just adds on top of um, what Art Growlithe was already doing, but in a really great way. Next up, we've got Spyclops, which, my god, <laughs> it's just such a good name. It's a steel dark type, and it's a Cyclops whose eye is a spyglass like <laughs> it's just so clever like it's such a simple mon it's it's one of those mons where you're just like that's really cool like i probably wouldn't use it but it's just really cool to look at you know next up we've got dolphin which is a water fairy type dolphin pokemon yes let's get that dolphin representation we need a dolphin pokemon make it happen game freak water type uh, uh water fairy type is really cool and great for this it's very cutesy got the little foam coming out of its you know blowhole and it makes a little heart just a little heart, um, and it's just great. It's just, just a lovely little dolphin mon. Next up, we've got Dwebble. It is a Medizian Dwebble, and Dwebble is now a pearl, and that's just, that's just great. It just makes me happy. He just looks so happy with his little pearl shell. He's like, look at me, I'm glistening. Like, I just, I love it. I love Dwebble, and I think it deserves more love, honestly. Next up, we've got Delmize, which is Ghost Steel. Enhances those ghostly elements and gives it, like, a phantasmy captain's hat with a hook and it's just very like got rid of all the moss it almost looks like like an updated like maintained version of delmize in a way you know 
Um, and it's also got a um, a new ability called Shipwright, which powers up water type moves. So it continues that like that trio of like uh, um, the the giving like steel worker before it now has shipwright so it powers up water type moves super cool next up we have neridal which is narried plus dolphin i'm not sure what a narried is i'm assuming it's some kind of fairy uh and it just very much has that idol aesthetic to it it's very much got the long flowy multicolored hair and like super cutesy you know almost japanesey kind of level cute to it looks like it, it could be some kind of new you know i don't know idol of some kind <laughs> Next up, we've got Crustle, Medizian Crustle, and look at this boy! I love that his shell is just like this big, glistening, pearl-like, like, and it's got the shine in its eyes, and it just looks so happy. You know, you know, Crustle just deserves to be happy. He doesn't deserve to have a big old rock. He deserves to have, like, and it's also it's a pearl necklace, which is great. It just looks like it's pimping, like, big pimping Crustle over here, you know? <laughs> Next up, we have Hakatrio, which is a psychic dark type. It is based on Hakate. Uh, the mother and the maiden and the crone, um, that, that, that kind of trio, um, it's got, it's, you know, the maiden is at the bottom, the mother, and then the crone at the top. It's very interesting, it's kind of like peas in a pod, in a way, mixed, mixed in with that psychic and dark typing. It's got the ability Necromancer, which powers up ghost, ghost type moves, super cool, in general. It, it, it so it, it's kind of a, a match to, um, Delmize in that way, where it has, technically, a trio of types. So I just I just so it like it has the psychic dark and ghost typing because the psychic um, The dark and the ghost each match up to a different age of of, of, of Hakate next up we've got Medizian Elekid and it's fire type and I like how they turn the plugs from the little plug thing to little volcanoes and That's a really clever little concept there. I like I like the and they made like the things more wavy like lava as a symbol and then you have the fire in the fire symbol is or lecture symbol is now fire so changed everything to be just slightly fire type and those slight changes really make a difference and they add up next up we've got magby which is electric type so we're switching magby and elekid so now it's electric type its head looks like a little storm cloud and now it's got instead of the flames got a little lightning bolt so it's just like kind of that switching of typing kind of like i did with uh corneran ice q and corneran stone journer it's kind of that same kind of concept next up we have dumb Oth. <laughs> it's literally just dumb plus moth and it just looks like such a derp. It's just such a derp It's a bug type just little derpy moth and I just love moths So it is like it being just a little derp moth. It's just simple and effective next up. We've got Medizian Electabuzz fire type um, And before anybody comes at me in the comments and says oh Magby should be named Elibi and Elikid should be named Magkid or and like it should be Magtabuzz or whatever. No, <laughs> no, it's freaking Alolan Sandshrew called Ice Shrew and Ice Slash. No, it's not. So why do you keep saying that it should be? It shouldn't. It's just a freaking regional variant. They swapped the typing. Doesn't even mean it needs to change the name, especially if the design like this Electabuzz is very similar to the origin. Like so. Anyway, continuing on with this mod. I really like the the fists that he went with like the way the fist looks it almost looks like a glove with a flame coming off of it I really like that as well as the flame on the chest It just all comes together so well and the way that they did the horns uh, yet again made them like a little You know candles almost just really well done next up We've got magmar and we're continuing on that storm cloud aesthetic his arms look more like storm clouds and his tail looks like a storm cloud with little lightning bolts coming out of it as well as it's got a little lightning bolts thing. It's just lightning everywhere, just really hammering in that Electabuzz vibe. Electabuzz and Magmar are just both fire and electric incarnate in their designs. Switching those two is just really just you know, they it does switch those two in the best way. We've got Kakanshush, which is a mixture of cocoon, conscious, and shush. So it's self it's a self-conscious, introspective um, little bug type, like, in, in so, like, when it goes into its little cocoon, it's just, like, introspecting, it's, like, going inside, you know, it's, like, when you're, like, trying to self-analyze, it's doing that exact thing, it's self-conscious. Next up is Electivire, and it's just gone full-on magma. Full-on magma, fire ground type, interesting, they added that secondary typing in there. But it's just full-on magma, it's got magma dripping off the tails, it's arms look like magma, it's got lava coursing through its, like, little beard here, it's just full-on full-on fire type in that regard and then next up we have mag mortar which is a electric flying type because electric and flying works so well because it's a storm cloud 
you got the electric, you got the air, which is like commonly associated with with flying type. Flying type is essentially a substitute for air type, and so it just it just combines so well. And I just really like these two for that. And then the final stage of Dumoth, it is Catenlight. It is Caterpillar plus Enlightenment. It is a Bug Psychic type, and it literally went <laughs> Dumoth went in self reflected, was like, yo. I'm dumb. I'm gonna learn some shit, and then, ev and then evolved. And was like, no, you know what? I'm enlightened. I like, I meditated, and now I know the answers to the universe. Like, I love that. That's such a fun aesthetic for a uh, or in concept for a bug type. Next up, we have Trubbish, poison normal type, and it is just a little more cute version of Trubbish, I guess. I don't know. He's like his bag is a little less ripped and more like seems like taken care of a little bit more. He's a bit more derpy uh, in general, and yeah, he's just. He's got a new ability called Recycle, so he's I guess he's based on more so recycling. Um, it raises defense and special defense stats when hit by a poison type move. Well, that's interesting. I like that little ability, kind of recycling the poison typing. You know, because if it gets hit by a poison type move, then it recycles the, the toxic nature of it and, and, you know, turns it into something good. Next up, we've got Medizian Skiddo, and it's Grass Rock type. It's just great. It's just a little craggy Skiddo, and I really like how they subtly change things, you know? They got the little rocks to the hooves, the, the it's back and like fur on its uh, 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 like like mid area kind of looks like a hill covered with brush, and then you have the little little horns coming out that like look like a little I don't know, stone monument. Like it just looks like a good like terrain, you know. It just looks like terrain. That's what it looks like. Yeah, terrain. That's what I'm trying to think of. The ghost type based on sound waves and sonars, like that's. It's so interesting, actually. Like, I like Noibad. I think Noibad and uh, Noivern are really cool. Um, cool mons in general. But turning it, taking, taking away its dragon typing and making it ghost typing is very interesting. And I wonder what the ghost typing has to do with, like, its, like, sonar abilities. I'm very interested in that. I wish they had a dex entry here to explain that a little bit further. But, you know, we'll see how it evolves. Also, I just realized it now, now that it's ghost type, the gray of its face looks more like a skull rather than like the the way it looked before that's cool next up we've got garb cycled so instead of uh garbador it's garb cycled so they're a poison knife uh poison normal type all about recycling and i just think that's that's great i mean it's really it's really good recycling is important and just kind of spreading that message i think the recycling symbol on the chest is a little much but <laughs> Overall, the design's pretty good. It's very reflective of uh, Garboder and that that kind of same thing. I love how its feet are a trash can and a stool. <laughs> oh, this thing is so ridiculous. I love it. Oh my gosh. Next up, we've got Cragoat. And yeah, look, we're getting some uh, original evolutions here. And what I love is that it continues to look like uh, like the back looks like a, two ferns. You know, two like two trees. I don't know what a fern is, but it looks like two trees like the, the uh, along its back. I just think that's super, super clever. Um, and it's got full on like rock feet. Like help hopefully to try and traverse the like rocky terrain of the Metas region. Burn, no longer, Noidar, full on radar, full on like those are huge, huge ears for its tiny little head. I feel bad for this dude. He's got to have insane neck, uh, neck muscles. My gosh. Next up, we've got Minima, which is the rock dark type fossil of the region. I am not entirely certain of the uh, kind of uh, fossil and dinosaur this is based on, um, but it, someone, someone in the comments here is saying Intellidont or Hyenodon. I'm not 100% sure what the what the answer is here. Anyway, it kind of looks like a mammalian crocodile in a way to me. I like the rock dark type. It feels very much like like it, it just exudes that dark typing. Next up, we've got Predama. That's cool. Yeah, it's full on gone like uh, like. Before it kind of seemed a little bit maybe reptilian, uh, with like like kind of like reptilian mammalian mix, but this is full on mammalian, um, and just big on like dog with a pompadour and crazy big teeth. Like this, it's crazy how like sometimes Pokemon can be so terrifying. Yet you're like, oh, I want to use that on my team, even though like it, it, it and you you think of it as friend, like oh my friend Predama, but this thing is like also so terrifying. And as the counterpart, we have the handprint fossil, which turns into Nerdenthal. It's a mixture of a nerd and a Neanderthal. So it's... <laughs> I love this. I love this mod. It's a rock psychic type. It's literally just like 
a primitive man that's also a nerd. <laughs> like, you just added that, like, nerdy aesthetic to it. It gives me a Psychonauts vibe, um, for sure. Nerdenthal evolves into Paleolect, a rock psychic type continued. It's got a little abacus that it's using its mind to hold and use. Um, its name is a mixture of Paleolithic and Intellect. And honestly, Dr. Stone who? Like, what? <laughs> this dude is literally Dr. Stone. <laughs> Freaking rock hair. It's very much like, feels that like Dr. Stone aesthetic to it. Next up, we've got Keelikin, which is a dragon fairy type. Its name is based on the Keelin. And uh, Lucky it's, it's also based on the Keelin in, or Kirin in uh, Japanese. Uh, but the Keelin is like a horse, dragon, deer thing. And it's crazy. And it is really a good service to that idea. I think it's very fantastical. And like fairy type fits it very well because it's very elegant. And um, it's called the elusive Pokemon, I assume, because it's very like, it's like got a lot of grandeur to it. Very holier than thou. Not like in attitude, but like not holier than thou, but that's what I mean. I mean, like it's like very above everyone else. It's just very holy in that way. Next up is Irish Shard, and I just I just think this mod's super cute, and I love the inclusion of the pride flag. It is it is a pride flag. It's not just a rainbow. It is actually intentionally supposed to be like a pride flag because you can see it's hanging from to their head like a flag. It's 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 intentional, um, and it's just super cute, and I love the little representation nod there. Super cool. Next up is Pyrelmo, and before you go like, oh, Elmo? It's uh, Saint Elmo, that's what they says there. So it's Pyros plus Saint Elmo. And I like how it has like, it's, it's, it's an antithesis to Irish art if you couldn't tell, and it's an electric fire type. And what I like is that it has, its feet look like little jet boots, like, you know, like Astro Boy or something. Like, it just looks like that, and it looks like it has like a little marshmallow, lava lamp-esque hair thing coming out of it. It's just very, a very simple and clean design. Next up is the pseudo line, and we talked about this in our favorite fake mon of November. This is Squant or Squant. Um, it is the beast Pokemon. It's based on a, just a bunch of different um, little mythological creatures. You got the like you got deer horns, pig nose, boar nose, but it's also bipedal. It's just a like impy kind of thing going on there. Um, Sater almost a little bit thrown in there, and it's just a pure normal type, but it evolves into Hoofty. Sorry, I just love that name. Hoofdy. It just it's so much fun to say. And it's more of like kind of a getting playing more into that mythical beast. Like it's like pig nose, goat horn, devilish kind of thing going on there. Very, very like cheeky is what it looks like. Very cheeky in a way. Um, and then its final evolution is three evolutions. And I, I if you watch my favorites of uh, November, you'll know what these are. But here it is. First, we've got Goliathorn Forest Form. It is a normal grass type. And I, it's got these base aesthetics, you'll see in a moment, but it's got these base aesthetics um, where the horns got these shrubbery on them and like the shrubbery on its arms and like it's very much hanging, like hanging moss off of it. But it changes when it becomes Goliathorn Hill form and it's normal fire now. And it's got more flamey elements. And it's got that, like it looked like it had kind of like a suit going on before, but now it looks like a straight up, like just like fur. And then the horns are different. The horns being different too is really what makes this for me. Is like the fact that they made the, the horns were not only like the like added different elements of the actual typing, but also changed according to the typing. This gives me very Ifrit vibes from Final Fantasy. Very much the very much so that. Wow, just let me just trip over my words. Jeez. But there's also the third form of Goliathorn River form, and this one is just next level. I love the little orb of water between the horns. It's also drippy and flowy and elegant. And like this, it just like each form brings a different kind of like elegance to it. And it's just so cool. Like, and also the fur on the bottom, like makes these little like wispy, watery, swirling patterns. Just so cool. I, I th this, this is why I included it in my favorites of that month. Cause it, it's just, it's just great. Next up we have Stimfell. This is a, a, a legendary Pokemon. It is a dark flying type. It's a part of a trio of dark types. But um, they're all based on some kind of disaster. I know what you're going to say. Oh, this looks like Mandibuzz. It's different than Mandibuzz. It's legendary Pokemon. Don't be that guy. Um, and if you are that guy, and you didn't, you type the comment before you listened to me, someone go call that guy out. Say, hey, dude, clearly you didn't watch the video. And overall, it's really cool. It's got this mask. Um, and it's, uh, it's based, I'm pretty sure they're based on mythological beasts that, like, I can't remember if, like, I think it was Hercules fought. 
or I think it's just mythological beasts throughout like different lore in the, like the disastrous beasts. I think that's like, kind of like the idea. It's called the Flying Menace Pokemon, so it's essentially supposed to be some kind of like menace to society. Next up, we have Ermanster, which is based on the Ur Aramanthian Boar, um, and plus Monster, and it's Dark Ground type, so we have the Dark Flying, Dark Ground, um, and this one is just monstrous. It has that same kind of helmet with the moon coming off of it. With uh, instead of a red a little ribbon, it has a brown ribbon now. And it's just cool. I think this little trio is kind of unique and different. And I like, I just realized that it's like got like armor on its arms and like as its toes to the same kind of color. Next up, we have Skiller, which is a mixture of Scylla and Killer. Um, it's dark water type. And it's, yeah, it's based on the Scylla. If you don't know what the Scylla is, it's from the Odyssey. Um, and it's, it's just this crazy beast. It's actually in Smite. I actually play a Scylla in Smite sometimes. Um, <laughs> But this is crazy beast, and I like how it continues that armoredness um, in like this pot that it's encapsulated in. Because usually the Scylla is in water; it's like it's kind of like a Hydra in a way. Um, but this one now it's encapsulated in water and uses like it's kind of like one of the. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, Octodad in a way, in that way, like it uses its appendages as feet. That's just kind of the vibe I get from it. But it's also got like a way different vibe than other like Hydra Eskmons, like Hydreigon. Um, and I just, I really respect the design aesthetic of this. Also, I just realized this one, the, the rib on the back is black for this one. One thing I should mention is these actually represent the sky, the land, and the sea as well. Kind of like a Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza thing going on there. And it's really, and the, the, so they're the, the menace of the sky, the menace of the land, and the menace of the sea. That's kind of what they represent. And it's a really, really cool trio idea for legendaries. Next up, we have the box legend for Pokemon Matriarch. This is Ophidna. It is based on Ophidia plus Echidna. Echidna is not being like the, the you know, the Echidna, the like the animal, but in the, the mythological beast Echidna. It's kind of based on that. It is a water rock type, which I think is such a cool uh, co type combination for a legendary Pokemon. Rarely seen, and it's got... ...and, like, very, like, it has that, you know, we already had Shellag, but it's very Sea Witch sea hag kind of vibe to it but like in the most elegant way very it kind of gives me almost a god of war vibe to it with its level of like beauty but terrifyingness at the same time and the last mon of the metas decks is typhurno it is a flying water type so the water rock type conquers the fire flying type the blue the blue typically overpowers the red legendary that's a pattern not many people notice but the blue typically overpowers the red so flying fire type is <laughs> quad weak to a water and rock type um but i think this is interesting that they didn't decide to go for the fire dark type which or ghost for that matter and it's very much uh it's based on typhon and inferno and it it i don't know i just i just like this mon it like it's very gives off that masculine energy where as opposed to a fitness um feminine energy and it's very much like all the things boys would like you know like very like edgy and ghostly and ghastly and serious and like it's very it's very not like it's beautiful but like in a it's more like i should say like handsome it's like it feels very handsome in that way i also like it has like little fire snakes coming out of his thing very lovecraftian in nature like they're both very lovecraftian which i really like actually kind of a different take on a legendary pokemon i was wrong there's one more pokemon it's chrysor it is a mixture of chrysos which means gold in greek and soar it is the physical representation of the Golden Fleece. Um, you know, Jason and the Argonauts, the Golden Fleece. It, it's literally the, the 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 sheep that bore the Golden Fleece um, as a Pokemon. It's very much Shaman Sky form, incarnate, pure Steel type. Super cool. Um, I, I almost would have gotten Steel Flying, honestly, because it looks like it could. It could fly, but I like its long ears and, yeah, kind of Dumbo vibe. But it's got these horns that are like double horns, and they're very, like, it's like like almost like a crown kind of a teeny esque very much the you know pixie pokemon pixie mythical pokemon of this region but that's it for the metas region what did you think which one was your favorite let me know in the comments down below and make sure to go check out the metas region over on instagram they do some amazing stuff they're they're going to be doing another region so follow them and uh, check in for stuff currently they're posting all of their mons by type so you can see, uh, you know, kind of a conglomerate of all of those different Pokemon by that type. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future region reviews and all other fake mon content on this channel. We do lots of fake mon content. But uh, anyway, with that, I will see you guys next time.